That's right, people. Here we go. It's the stream you love. 46 names in this tier list. It is a squad selector with a difference, people. Welcome back to the James Lawrence Allcott channel. We will be getting straight into this. And we've got a bit of a twist this time because the JLA Discord server has created their own community squad. Whose squad will be better? My squad or their squad? We will find out in due course. But let's get into the tier list. I will put through my squad as we move along. 23 names. Of course, the Euros are on the way. And I think the big question that we're all asking is, will we? Am I right? Come on! Come on, England. Now. Now, right? This is a big video for me. This is always the one that gets me excited. We've been doing this for a long time. And this is always a live that we absolutely love. And so much so, I just had a moment of flashback of fear that I was muted, but I'm not. Hope you're all doing well. Let's get into the squad. I looked at my squad from October. There are six changes to that squad. Let's not mess about. Lots of teams and, and players to get through, of course. Not teams. I'm excited, as you can tell. Let's start off. Let's start off with our goalkeepers, because I think uh, I'm going to work my way through it with a bit more order this time. So many players to get through, and hopefully I can find them in this uh, malaise of players that we have in front of us, right? But we'll start off with goalkeepers. Now, what I found really interesting, actually, was I was on Stathead. And there's a link to Stathead in the description if you want to check it out. And by the way, the uh, the tiers, of course, are, and you should know this by now, no chance, danger zone. Now, danger zone is going to be interesting here, guys, because this is my squad. This is not Southgate's squad. This is my squad in this world, in this realm that we call life. And that in the danger zone area, I think there might be some that, and I might even chuck them into should be fine. But I want to kind of create the 23. Actually, I know exactly what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be able to go to this and I'll put forward my 23. But there'll be some people in this tier list that because it's Southgate, it will be one where they like they should be fine, right? But they wouldn't be in my squad. Let's go over to Stathead. Because on Stathead, and if you want to take the, your... Um, analysis to the next level like get on stat head it's so good uh, and you're able to make it far more bespoke and we're starting off with goalkeepers here so you can create custom stats for custom um players from custom countries um and what i looked at here was the save percentages of players that initially had 15 but if you had 15 games in the top five leagues and you'll see that butland isn't on here which will upset a lot of people i know especially scottish fans but the reason he's not in there is not he's, one, he's not in one of the top five leagues. So the obvious ones that are there, but I just wanted to chuck a couple of other names out. Dean Henderson. Jason Steele is an interesting one that no one has spoken about. And I'd love to know how Brighton fans feel. Is there any reason why he should be anywhere near it? Of course, Trafford won the under-21s last year. Um, Sam Johnston is in this tier list. Fodderingham just misses out. He's had a tough year. God bless him. Um, and Dean Henderson uh, is another one to think about as well. Nick Pope is, Nick Pope is my first casualty when it comes to my squad, because when it comes to my squad, I'm struggling to have him in when he's not playing. Now, there's a couple of players that I've got quite big concerns. So we can go with the easy side of it first, right? Obviously, Pickford goes in, right? Oh, he'll go and he'll play. We've then got Ramsdale, who should be fine, and I don't mind him going, but I am slightly concerned with the sort of narrative around it because if Pickford gets injured and Ramsdale comes in I think there's just going to be a, a lot of pressure on him you know he's, he's played six games for Arsenal this season but of course Nick Pope and Sam Johnston are the two other runners and or riders when it comes to this can you tell how excited I, am? I just bloody love the Euros we've got some very very exciting stuff on the way now Pope is injured till the end of April, as Geordie Ladd said. And what I want you to do is get involved in the comments, of course. Hit the like button if you enjoy this one for me as well. Let's get this out to as many people as possible. Subscribe to the channel as well if you've not enjoyed this one before. We'll do more lives. But let me know where you think they should go. Pope is injured till the end of April, and that is obviously a problem. And him coming back so rusty, I don't really like that. I don't really like Ramsdale either. So someone who kind of jumps ahead of them for me is Sam Johnston. He's played 20 games. Save percentage is okay, I guess. It's not, it's not actually, it's one of the, it's not incredible. But I think he's playing and I think that's really important. So he's in my squad. So that leaves me with Ramsdale and Pope. And if you're not fit, as my boy Kweku says, you're not it. So I can't put Pope in. I just, I know he's enormous. I know he's brilliant. I know he's great. 
and actually save percentage is the best with 73 percent but i just i feel very concerned about him coming back and then just not being kind of used to playing football so in this one and look we might do one more when the final squad comes out but in this one i, I think i'm going to go with ramsdale on the plane at the moment i think nick pope's in the danger zone because of that we move Okay, so the centre-backs is very, very interesting. Super, super interesting. And actually, I'll tell you what, as we go along, we can move the players in. Look at Jimbo. We've come a long way, guys. So for me, Pickford, John Stone, and Ramsdale are my three goalkeepers. If you had Pope instead, then fine. I think the one thing I really do not want to see is Pickford getting injured at any stage. Okay, we move on to the centre-backs, which is really, really interesting because I really struggle with this and I think this is where you're going to start getting angry with me. Um, and you've got players like Jared Branthwaite, third most aerial duels, one, 64. You know, the boy's six foot five. I think his time will come. Left-footed as well. I scored two goals this season. Levi Colwell has got that flexibility of playing, he's played 16 games at left-back, 15 at centre-back. Lewis Dunk, of course, has, you know, seasoned pro Gareth seems to like him most progressive passes for a centre-back with 131 Joe Gomez Mark Gaye Esri Konsa who's the sixth fingers players when it comes to live ball passes so very solid on the ball in this Unai Emery side Harry Maguire of course John Stones is the usual ones now let's go with the, the guys that have to be there John Stones oh he'll go and he'll play Maguire Maguire's on the plane, isn't he? And he's on the plane for me as well. He's never let England down. I know we have problems with him, but for England, he's always been absolutely superb. A couple that aren't going to make it for me. And Tomori, Tomori is one of them. And the reason oh, I'm struggling with Tomori is it's his aerial dual success rate. I think it's important in international football. And I think in a different team, and we're going to do a video. If you want more England content, we've got this idea about like five unique ways that England could win the Euros, different tactics. So if you want that, let's have a like total. If we can get 5,000 likes, we'll put that out there um, because we've been chatting about it a lot. And there's probably a world where Tamori works a little bit better and with a different manager works better as well. And I get it, it's my squad, but with the way that this team is playing and is set up and when it comes to international football, unless you're going to go full force with, you know, really, really pushing, I think you need to be able to win set pieces. And that's why I think Stones and Maguire and two others, that I'm going to say in a second, go ahead of Tamori. Also, a bit of flexibility. And the big thing with my squad, I'll get, get into it as well, is balance. Balance, balance, balance is super, super important for the entirety of the squad. So Tomori, I think he's got a chance, right? But for me, he's, he's in the danger zone. He's, 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 he's close, but he's not close enough for me. Konza is a similar thing. I don't think it's no chance. I just think it's... I just don't have him in there for me. The two... The, the players that I had when it came to centre-backs were... I had Lewis Dunk. We'll put them in. Should be fine. Then we'll go from there, right? Levi Colwell, for me, has to be on the plane. Has to be on the plane. Because we're struggling for left-backs, and the left-backs that we're going to play are people that aren't able to stay fit a lot of the time, despite being very good footballers. So for me, in my squad, when I was putting it together, I wanted Levi Colwell in there to offer up that ability to go and play on the left-back, as well as playing as a centre-back. And Levi Colwell is the future for me. He's got to be in there, OK? Who else have we got in here? I'm just looking for all the centre-backs. Are we missing anyone? Ben White. Interesting. So for me, it came down to Bramford we had as well. Bramford for me, no chance, but I think he's brilliant and I think his time will come. For me, it came down to Ben White and Dunk. And so Dunk, do you want him for those set pieces to go and do it that way? Or do you want Ben White? Now, the important thing to say here, this ain't Gareth's squad. It's my squad. And again, when we're talking about balance... And we're going to get it to it in the midfield. I tweeted it today. There is a huge, huge problem for England if Declan Rice gets injured. Good God, please don't. Please, please don't. But if he does, in terms of that sixth position or the double pivot, you'd have to wiggle it about. And so I want safeguarding for that in my bloody squad. So for that reason, Ben White should be on the plane. He really should be on the plane. I think Lewis Dunk might be the one that he takes. Joe Gomez is an interesting conversation now. I know people are getting annoyed. Gomez can play six. Don't, Gomez can't play six. I don't. I appreciate it. He's your guy. 
He's doing all right right now. And he stepped in as an inverted fullback. I get that. But there's a difference. See, people seem to be getting confused with what six is. And Ben White, the thing that gets forgotten is that he can, like, he obviously hasn't done it for a while, but you have to remember his ceiling. And the important thing for me, as we go to, to my squad, is that I want players that can play in different positions. And Ben White won't start for me. Stone starts. And I, I, I would start Colwell. I think I would start Colwell. Um, ahead of Maguire. But in terms of my four centre-backs, I would take Maguire. And I don't mind if he plays. And if he steps in, he's got so much experience. I think he's like obviously super, super useful. But Ben White can step in in right back. He could probably go over and play left back. And he could probably... I think of of sort of um, last-ditch sixes, your fourth centre-back offering up that versatility, I think would be super important. And I think in time, he's going to take over from Carl Walker as well, in my opinion. And so I would put him in, in as the fourth one. I, I wouldn't mind it being Lewis Dunk because a bit like I put Connor Cody in a while back and it was kind of like, you know, having that experience. I think it's good to have captains in your team as well. I think that's like, quite important, actually. But I just thought, Ben White could step into a whole, you know, so many different roles there. Look, he's going to be annoyed because he's not going to be starting. And obviously they had their problems. But if I was picking the squad, I would get him in my squad and I would put him in there. So that would put Lewis Dunk in the danger zone. But I think he actually might be fine. Gomez, I get it. I get why you might want him there. I I would like to have an out and out better left-sided fullback. And what I would also like, and I think Levi Colwell can do what Joe Gomez can do. Go- Joe Gomez is a steady, solid, great footballer, but he is not any better than Levi Colwell in my posi- in my opinion. Not not by like gargantuan jumps, right? So what I would want is I would want the ability to go and get at the opposition. And so when we're getting to like the left back position, we've got problems to a point because we haven't got a huge amount of depth. And we've got Luke Shaw, who's played 12 games this season. And you've got Ben Chilwell, who currently played 12 games this season as well. He's only played 180 minutes for England since 2022. That said, in my squad, I, you have to kind of make, you have to move things around to allow for that. And... For, for the left back positions this is one of the first ones that I'm like I hate this shout but I had to make it for the squad that I wanted to make Southgate I think will go differently I'm certainly will and I think he probably should be fine so in the tier list I'll probably put him there but Trippier is not in my squad I think he probably will be fine but for me he, he wouldn't be in my squad um, Gomez I don't think Gomez will make it so I'm going to put him in danger zone I wouldn't put him in no chance but I don't think um, he will be in there, if I'm honest. So my left backs, actually, in a weird sort of, in a weird way, because I don't want to do it, but I have to do it because I can't trust either of them to be fit. I would take Chilwell and I would take Shaw as well. Let's see if we can find Shaw. Where are you? Can't find Shaw right now. He'll turn up. There he is. I would take both of them. And look, if if they're fit, it's probably Shaw, right? He's been absolutely fantastic for England. And he'll go and he'll play. I want an out and out left back. I want that quality. And I know, like, yeah, I get it. You can get, and I get Trippier can play left back. I understand that as well. But I think, I think Trent's gone past him. And so my fullbacks, we can move on to that. My fullbacks, we have to find a way for Trent. We have to get him in and we have to utilize him. He's a joke. You know, 8.5 progressive passes per 90, first for that. 3.4 shot creating actions from open play. I'm, I'm, it's taking my breath away. Trent has to play. play. Oh, he'll go and he has to play. He's got to play. We've got to find a way to get him in, please. Which is difficult because Carl Walker has never let us down and they both have different superpowers. And look, Carl will be there. I'm sure I'll have a bloody good time. But um, I think those are my two fullbacks. And so if we keep building this squad together as one. And if you are enjoying it, of course, hit the like button. This is what we see when it comes to the defence. So as I say, I want a proper... I want a proper one on the left-hand side. Sure, um, and again, I think there's so many options here and what we can do. And uh, I'll, I'll work my way around to this because I think it shows different areas of the pitch that we, we will be set for. But at the moment, I think this is the best that we've got. Trippier out for a couple of games at the moment and I actually it breaks my heart a little bit to not put him in there and I understand that as that second one and maybe if you're sort of concerned about both those, my, my thought process is that to have an out-and-out out left to be able to go and Chua to be able to go. And if they both get injured, you've still got him, 
who can go left sided centre back and bring in uh, Maguire into the team. I think that great, provides good safeguarding, and so that's why I would do that. I really think Cole is the future. I just think he's unbelievable, and I feel so sorry for players like you know Gay and stuff like that. But this is my squad, and uh, I'm sticking with it. And I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm actually really happy with it. So, Gay, I'm sorry. You're in the danger zone. Although, actually, I think he probably might be fine. I think it's between Dunk and Gay, maybe, when it comes to that. Or it could be those two and Tamori misses out. We'll find out in, in, in due course. Let's have a couple of no chances, then. I think Mason Mount has no chance. I don't see him getting anywhere near it. I'd love to know what people think. If anyone feels like there's a possibility of of him making it still i think he's close to getting fit um but yeah he's not there yet of course reese james misses out i think we're just like i can't have three injury prone fullbacks i just can't and he just seems in such a stacked area of the pitch i think he's like he's not even i don't think he has a chance i really don't think you can get him in there right now with the way that everyone else has been playing of course if trent's not fit i think maybe you chuck him in danger zone because look, if any of those guys get um lose their way and with our fullbacks we do seem to have a lot of injuries then that could that could change things a little bit um in terms of other no chances james ward prowse that's all we'll come back to james ward prowse because there's a twist there is a twist that blew my mind actually do you know, actually, i'll tell you what i would my opinion is but stick around to see the well a bit of a spoiler alert james ward prowse is in the discord communities squad I'll show you that at the end of the video. But he is one of a few surprises. I don't want to give away too many, but he is one of them. For me, James Will-Prowse, I think when it comes to set pieces, that's why Trippier, I can allow myself to let him go a little bit. Big miss, says, uh, Peru says, big miss, Reese. Yeah, huge huge miss. It's such a shame, but it is, you know, it is what it is, right? So I wouldn't put him in there. I don't think James Will-Prowse, I don't think Gareth Southgate would ever legitimately think about getting Ward Prowse in there, which is a shame. And I, I, in previous squads, I've put him in there. I think if you're making a team and Trent's in that team and Declan Rice is in that team, I think that's the other important thing. When we're talking about set pieces now, with someone like Declan Rice, you, you let him take corners. Like, we've seen how good he's been. So I think that means that, you know, the ability of James Ward Prowse or a Trippier and what they offer is now getting gazumped a little bit by some of these other players. They've had amazing careers. Let's not have a go at them. But you get what I mean. Uh, let's move into midfield. Okay. Now, midfield is tricky. As I said, the sixth position is a problem. Let me go through some definites, right? Bellingham. Oh, oh, he'll go. And he'll play. Oh, he'll play. <laughs> right? So, no, I just think he'll go and he'll play. Um, Declan. Oh, he'll go. And he'll play. Um, who else have we got here? And actually, I've got a couple of fullbacks here. Livermento. Livermento can play on both sides. It's not a euphemism. You know what he does in private life? It's up to him. But he can obviously play right back or left back. So he's not a horrible shout as a last minute uh, recruit. If you want someone who can play left or right. Stay with the midfield. Let's stay with the midfield. So in terms of midfield options, let me run through them for you. Because as I say, if Declan Rice, I don't, you have said it, I've said it, you know what I mean, okay? So other sixes, I put it out on Twitter, and yeah, people, that out and out six isn't there. And so that's why for a last, last resort, having someone like Ben White knocking about, I think is very useful. Ross Barkley, I'd love to know, uh, maybe we can get a poll on this. Do you f feel like Ross Barkley should be called up in the next couple of friendlies just in case? Because I think as a six, I think he is... He's been great. Um, he's been absolutely fantastic. Is he that out-and-out out Rodri Declan Rice six? No, he's not. And I think that's a problem. We don't have that replacement. Think about someone like Cab um, Phillips. Phillips, that's a, you know another problem. He's not been great at... Well, he's not played at Man City. And at West Ham, he's, he's not been great. He really hasn't. You know, if you're going, who's your West Ham midfielder? You're going James Ward-Prowse. Jordan Henderson. I think he's one. I think he'll be fine. He's not in my squad. I wouldn't put him in my squad. This is what I would do. So I would have Declan Rice. And in terms of those sort of like two sixes, I think it's time for Gobby Maynard. I think he's just very, very special. Um, does he start? 
I don't think he starts just yet. I think there's a there's a group game where you could start him if you want to kind of mix it about. But if he comes in, it feels like it's Rooney, it's Owen. He's got that grace about him in terms of just being absolutely fine. And I think when he steps in, if you think of, say, a bit of a double pivot and someone who could do a bit of both, there's so many different ways that you can use him with different uh, um, players within in this squad. And so for me, when I have a look at the squad that I want to create and the balance I want to have, I want those two in there. And I, I'm probably going to go through my, my team here a little bit more in my squad than the, the tier list now. Because I think I want Mainu. And I want Rice. And those are my two who can sit there for me. Should we do it this way? We'll do it this way. I'll tell you what, let's go to that now. So that is the two that can sit. We've got centre-backs here. We've got full-backs. And then in midfield, you've got... If you think of this line here... Let me just draw the line here. If you've got some guys that are a bit better in the build-up phase, happy to drop back, and then you've got your guys who are proper tens. Bellingham can do everything, right? So I think you put Bellingham that side of it. And I think I put Gallagher in there as well. I think Gallagher has a lot of different uses. You can get him at them pressing hard, of course. But you can also get him playing as part of a, a midfield three. I know he's been playing a bit higher up when it comes to, to Chelsea. But I think he's totally got that in his locker. I think it offers something different. And I think in international football sometimes, it can be about the collective. But it can also be about individuals making something happen. And maybe that's something we can highlight at the end. In terms of players that can go and make something happen. I mean, already, I think you've got one. Gallagher in his own way. Rice. Mainu, Bellingham. And in terms of like, you know, real energy, someone like Chihuahua, maybe if he's at full flow. So I like that when it comes to my midfield. Then as we move up, I started to think about right wingers, left wingers, of course, but also these tens as well, because there's quite a few tens knocking about that, that are a good option for us. So that's my initial midfield in terms of the players that are, are at the back. And I've got to say, the thing that's, broken my heart a little bit and I'm not sure totally how I feel for it if anyone's in the danger zone out of those guys maybe Gallagher and I'll explain why not because he's not great but because in terms of the balance of a squad and this is what it's about it's about the balance of a squad I just th I just need Manu in there I think he's so good so for me he's on the plane I'm not sure he starts but he's on the plane Connor Gallagher on the plane, I think Gareth likes him, so I think he'd probably take him. I think there's someone that we're not talking about enough, Curtis Jones. Curtis Jones is the one that was in my last one of my last squads in October. He's not in this one. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. Because when I'm talking about that area and what you would have to change to if you lost someone like Declan Rice, who and it's him and Bellingham that are so, you know, indispensable, really, in terms of what they offer in that area of the pitch. Curtis Jones is, is quite a nice replacement. I think that's why he likes Henderson so much. The reason he likes Henderson, the reason he likes Calvin Phillips is exactly what I'm talking about in terms of what options have you got in your squad if you lose Declan Rice? Like if you, or if you have another guy that isn't bombing on, isn't bombing on, you want someone just to sit there with him. And I think Maino will do that. So I would put him in there. And I think he's jumped ahead of Calvin Phillips. And I think Henderson has had his time. I think, again, when we're talking about the, the player that's going to be on the bench. Say you don't have Henderson in the starting lineup, but you want to bring him in for energy, experience, leadership, uh, you know, still being good enough to go and win a group game. Southgate will probably bring him in. I think Southgate will bring him in. And, and I get it. It's sensible. It's fine. It's not fun. It's not my squad. Okay. So Gallagher, for me, then goes into the danger zone, but, you know, could be fine with them. Obviously, this till is a bit of a mess, but it's all for the aim of a nice discussion. We're then talking about 10s. Now, Foden obviously has to go. Oh, he'll go. And I think, he, I think you've got to find a team for him, a, a place for him in the team. Uh, I have my thoughts on that, which will come, I'm sure, uh, in the months and weeks or whatever it might be. But in terms of those 10s, let's go back to Stathead, actually, because th I think we've got to talk about a couple of players here. So if, if you think about 10s, you've got Eze, you've got Foden. Let's put him in the middle again. Uh, but Foden definitely has to go, right? You've got Madison. You've got Cole Palmer, who can play as a 10. Um, you've got Jack Grealish, who you can play as a 10 if you need to. Um, yeah, 
But if we go to Stathead, again, it was really so interesting to be able to like take it to this level with Stathead. Because this is the stats when it comes to shot creating actions from live passes. Now, part of this is, to be fair, is down to, I guess, the style of the team. But what's really interesting here, I think, a couple of things, and actually I'll, I'll show you Cole Palmer when we talk about him in a sec, but Madison is, uh, into, out of English players, and shot creating actions, is clear. He's so clear, and he's playing in such a central area. You know, Saka, Palmer, Foden, Trent, a lot of the time, let's say, and also set pieces as well, obviously, but I guess Madison gets that as well. Playing in wider areas. And can we talk about Tavernier? Or Tavernier, and I can never say his name right. Does he deserve a shout? Poor bloke. Per 90, it says a shot creating action per 90. But goals and assists per 90 as well. Cole Palmer, right up there. Right, right up there. Really, really interesting. And so for me, those two players have to be in. Like in terms of players that can create something for you, you've got to have Madison and you've got to have Cole Palmer. So that starts to make it a little bit tricky when we're doing our tier list because, well, and our squad, of course, as well. And there's a casualty here, and it breaks my heart. It really does. It hurts, it stings, and I don't want to do it. But I have to do it. If you're trying to make the best squad possible, you can't take Eze. <clears throat> you just can't. I just can't fit him in. So I think he's in, certainly in the danger zone. I actually think he's probably got to a point where he's no chance, as gorgeous as he is. As gorgeous as he is. I haven't got Harvey Elliott in here, which I think is actually quite cruel. I think you're right. I think he could be a different midfield option. Lewis Cook as well. I wanted to give a shout out. A few people talking about him in terms of being a six for the future. And I think it's one if he continues to play great in a mid-table team, then he then gets that jump and gets the spotlight. And then who knows what's happening. Um, I'm going to put Conor Gallagher there because he's not in mine. Jack Grealish. Cole Palmer has to go. Has to go. Madison has to go. Has to go. Ruben Loftus-Cheek is an interesting one. Ruben Loftus-Cheek, if Bellingham were to get injured, he would be a really interesting person to get involved because he, so he's kind of playing as a 10, but he's playing in the right half space a lot of the time because AC Milan play really, really wide. And he's in the top 10 for English midfielders when it comes to um, progressive carries. He's one of those where it's just like, yeah, just not enough output there. Gareth probably won't be having a proper look at him. Yeah, he's gorgeous. Yeah, he plays with a real sort of grace about him. I do like him. But I don't think he's got too much of a chance at the moment, sadly. Oh, I don't want to put Ezzy there. Can we just? I'm just going to put him in danger zone for now because it just breaks my heart a little bit. Looking like no chance for Anthony Gordon, sadly. Um, and I, what I will say, Anthony Gordon was in my squad before he got injured. It looks like it's six, seven months. Hopefully it's not. Hopefully I'm wrong. But he was in my squad um, because, again, I want some players that are going to go beyond. Let's get to that because I think that's interesting. Let's get to this midfield. So Madison and Foden have got to be in there. And Cole Palmer has generally been playing on the right-hand side. So he comes in as well. And again, in terms of making a balanced squad and having players that can, you know, can win the game for you. That's three additionals to the, to the guys we were looking at before. Saka is an obvious one. He comes straight in. And the front two, I think, pick themselves as well. In terms of Kane and of Watkins. We'll come back to, to those two as well. In terms of talking about those. And then we get over to that left-hand side. Um, I think Saka's a very easy one. There's no discussion there. And the right-hand side is pretty, pretty simple. But without Gordon, and I would have put Gordon in there, as I said. It means that I think because you have to have that player going beyond. I've got Rashford in there now. I, he wasn't in my he wasn't in my squad. He, he wasn't. Because I, I wanted... I wanted Gordon. I think his movement's better. I think he's in a better place. I think he's scoring more goals. I just think he's been better. Um, but he's not available. Rashford's not been bad for England. And so fair enough. I'll put him in there. And so if we come back to the tier list, and I'm going to tell you the squad from the Discord server in just a second, which I'm fascinated to hear your thoughts on this one. And I want to know if my squad's better than their squad at the end of this as well. Um, we have a few to finally get through. So Tony, for me, no, I think he's got to no chance because I think Watkins, the only thing you could say is you could chuck him into danger zone because if Watkins gets injured, Ivan Tony may step in. Dominic Solanke, I think it's between 
Solanke and Ivan Tony. So it'd be interesting to see Ivan Tony. I think I, you only hear actually great things about him at Brentford in terms of him within the squad. Everyone actually likes him. So I think if he is a good influence within the squad, I think that gives him a chance um, and he would be ahead of Solanke. If not, I think they maybe go with Solanke. But for me, I think you've got to go with Tony because Tony is a better, uh, he's a better finisher um, and he's different. It talks about different profiles. We'll have a look at that in a second. England have so many different profiles and I think that's crucial in all of this. Harry Kane. Oh, he'll go. And he'll play. And hopefully he'll lift. He's the captain, right? Pretty sure he is. Sterling. Guys, can we get a poll on? So there's a couple of people that are like, it's not really fair on them. Saka will go. He'll play. Watkins. He's on the plane. Um, And Grealish. Because you've got Grealish. You've got... Bowen, you've got Sterling, which I think is an important one to, to discuss. And you've got Rashford. So for that final spot, Bowen, I think, misses out just about when it comes to the right-hand side. I think when it comes to international level, I don't know, he just hasn't, he's flat to deceive a little bit for me, in my opinion. So then you've got, for one spot, there's one spot left in my squad. And you've got Sterling, you've got Rashford, and you've got Grealish. Oh, sorry, I've put Rashford in there. You've got Sterling, you've got Grealish. So which one out of those two, if, you, if you've got the option, you can take Sterling or you take Grealish, which two would you take? Because Sterling has been, you know, he's never let England down. Again, it's another one where, and I think he has been, he's always still a live wire for, for Chelsea. He's not been awful. Um, I think he's been frustrated. Six goals and three assists in the Premier League is not what he wants. But over Southgate's time, he is Southgate's sixth most used player. Marcus Rashford last year, 41 goal contributions. This season, 13. I think there's a, I think there's two conversations here. One is Grealish and Sterling. And I think the thing here is that they're so different. And essentially, it's two from three. It's Sterling, Rashford and uh, Grealish, in my opinion. And which one, which two of those three do you take? You guys are voting on Sterling and Grealish right now. I'm intrigued to know how that one goes. I think, look, very different profiles, as I say. And so this is what I've done. I've gone. And I do feel sorry for my other boy. Because he's done well. And I think he's a good different option. But I've stuck with Rashford. Because I think for England, he's done enough. It's a little bit like um, Harry Maguire as well, actually. Both of them are sort of had their t struggles. But for England, have generally been very, very good. And so with my squad, and this is my squad, what I want is I want options if people get injured. I think that's absolutely crucial and people forget that. I want to get as many of the best players in as I can. I want uh, the ability to have people that can step into different boxes. So obviously the goalkeepers are going to stay where they are, but you've got Stones who could step into the midfield. You've got White who could go here. I think he'd go, he could go left side. He could go in the midfield. He could probably play left back for you as well. Cole Will can do both. Shaw could step in as an inverted um, fullback if we want to do that. Trent, of course, midfield, higher up as well, is going to make his way. Walker can play in a, in a back three, so that's great. Gallagher can play here. He can play as a pressing sort of second striker like he did for Palace. He can play as part of a three. Bellingham. Bellingham, bizarrely, the best six, actually, you know, forget everything else. Like, if you're going, like, scores, you know, like on Football Manager... Bellingham's the best six because Bellingham's just the best player. And 11 Bellingham's wins any competition. But Bellingham can play here, obviously, second striker. He can play on this left-hand channel. You could probably play centre-back. You get my point. He can play absolutely anywhere in that midfield. Foden can play 10. He can play on the left. He can play on the right. He can play as a second striker as well. Madison can be a bit more a part of a midfield three. But obviously, plays a 10 as well. And that's why Eze doesn't make it in because you've got Madison, Foden, Bellingham, Palmer. All who and Kane, who would probably all want to play in that kind of ten zone. So having Eze as well, I just don't, I just don't think you need it when you need a little bit more safeguarding elsewhere. Rice, of course, can play as an eight as well. Manu can play as an eight. Just so much, so many options here, right? Palmer can can drop deep. Saka can play high and wide. He can also play in this channel course as well as can Palmer. Kane can drop. Watkins can go and work those channels and I think the reason I have Rashford and Grealish is because I think if you have Rashford and Sterling of course Sterling can play along all three but I think Sterling 
is a is quite similar to Rashford in that sense. And I think Rashford's got that bit more finishing ability, whereas Grealish, it might be a bit more about control. And the other thing I like about Grealish, he'll win you a he'll win you a foul. And he could win you a set piece. And that could be the difference. But who did you vote for? It is time to reveal the Discord Communities squad. Now, we had over like 400 votes. People voted for different areas and then they had to vote again. We'll go through the voting. So there is a different number uh, in the different rounds or the different positions, sorry. Massive thank you to Reese and everyone on the Discord server. If you want to be a big part of the JLA community, then please, please get involved in the Discord server. You will make friends. You will have a good time. We're doing Twitter spaces all the time on the JLAFC Twitter account. Please go and follow that as well and come and be a part of it. Like, have your say. Like, honestly, after every big game, it's so, so good. So, so good. So here is their squad. Let me make sure I've got the right one. And oh, that's my squad. Yeah, yeah. So this is my squad. And this is the Discord squad. So we've got the percentages here as well. So Pickford, Pope and Ramsdale are in goal. You've got Trent, Walker, Trippier. Just sure on the left-hand side, which I understand that reasoning. I don't, I'm not, I don't hate that. Ben White makes it in as well, alongside Stones, Maguire, and Tamori, who is in ahead. I'll tell you, I'll show you the players who missed out in just a second as well. Declan Rice and Ward Prowse. Ward Prowse in the squad. Can you see everyone? I'm not sure you can see everyone, can you? Hang on, here we go. There we go. Ward Prowse in there as well. Incredible stuff. Bellingham and Madison Gallagher and our boy Eze sneaks into the squad I think just ahead of Chilwell it was Saka and Palmer Kane and Watkins Foden and Grealish Rashford misses out let's have a look at that so here are the stats Johnston misses out Butland just misses out Colwell who's in my squad Maynard who's in my squad misses out Rashford misses out as well. And I think the bulk of these votes were done before um, Gordon's injury. So he doesn't make it in there as well. So very, very tight with some of them. Elliot and uh, Jones uh, knocking about as well as options. And Sterling with 8.9%. And Ramsey. Is that Jacob Ramsey? Or am I missing, uh, I'm missing a funny name there? And even, look, Dyer and Doughty. Good old Doughty got a, he got a chance as well. So there you have it. Right. Biggest question of all. When are we going to win it? Yeah. Two, whose squad is better? Let me know in the comments down below. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. Thank you so, so much. You are wonderful people. Subscribe on your way out. We're going to have a 